Hey guys, what's up? Um, no, nothing is wrong with your screen. There's nothing wrong with this video. Uh, I just wanna show you what I ended up buying. I know my last video I said I wasn't going to do it, but I did it. I bought another clone. So I wanna start off by talking about uh, what I bought. Obviously you can see what it is. It's from Venom. So this is my second bike or my second clone from Venom. Yes, I talk with my hands if you don't like it. Don't know what to tell you. Um, anyway, why did I buy another clone? I'll tell you why. So I, I did sell the R3. I had fun with the R3. The R3 is a fun bike, but these clones are so much fun. I sold my R3 because I wanted to purchase one of my cars, one of the cars that I got, the car that I just bought, I sold the R3 so that way I could get it. Um, and then I missed out on riding. So instead of saving up some more money to get a bigger bike again, I said, you know what, screw it. I think I'm gonna buy another clone. So I bought another clone through Venom. I went through Venom again because uh, the first time I went with them, I didn't have any problems. For me specifically, I didn't have any problems with them, the shipping, none of that. Yes, you pay a little bit more. Hey, whatever. Uh, it's still way under the price, way under the price of a real Grom. So anyway, they're fun. They're fun to mess with, fun to modify, and uh, again, they are cheap. Now, I've said this before, just because it's a cheap bike doesn't mean it's going to be cheap quality. Kind of. Uh, yes, some of the parts are cheap. It's hit or miss with some of these bikes. The Hellcat that I had, I will tell you, the plastics were trash. In the most recent video that I uploaded, you can see in that video, I had a few issues with it. Would I buy another Hellcat? Sure, sure. Um, because you can buy all kinds of stuff for them. You can buy better plastics, you can buy Grom plastics, and, and the integrity of the plastics will outlast the ones that come on the Hellcat. A lot of the stuff that you can buy for it, again, most of it fits. Some of it you do have to modify, but uh, yeah, they are very cheap. I don't like using the word cheap, so let's just say affordable. Very affordable, parts are affordable, and they're fun to ride and fun to modify. So yeah, got another one of these just because I missed uh, having the clone. So with this specific bike right out of the box, I've only had it for a week. Uh, I put a couple of miles on it going up and down the road, trying to test certain things out. And uh, I will say the biggest thing with any clone, if you don't know already, you always wanna tighten all the bolts, check all the bolts, change the oil out, change the oil right away if you plan on putting a plate on it and going. Change the oil, check the fuel tanks. Sometimes there is particulate metal pieces from the factory. Nothing wrong with it, it's just when they slap these things together, there might be some metal shavings in there. Yes, you have a fuel filter, filter, but over time you do not want that to go through the bike or have any other issues. So if you can, try to get in there and see if there's anything in there that's worth not being in there. That's the biggest thing. Check your tank, change your oil, adjust and tighten everything on the bike. Again, if you plan on getting on it and going right when you get it. So me, since I've got a little bit of time before I get this thing plated again and get insurance and all that stuff for it, what I did was changed out the carburetor. I went with another Nibby carburetor, same one that I had before. This model is a little bit updated, I can tell. Uh, the good thing about them is it comes with a few different jets. The main jet is a 110 right out of the box. A lot less restrictive, bigger intake. So I've got a 48 millimeter carb. I did the same thing on the Hellcat, zero issues once I tuned it. It was running a little rich on the Hellcat, but I've learned from my mistakes and messing and tweaking and stuff. So uh, yeah, I got the thing running nice and smoothly. With this bike, two things I think, if I can, yeah, two, two of the biggest things for me is this exhaust on my specific bike. Um, that sound is hideous. She sounds hideous. And I've tried everything to fix it. Uh, other than that, the second part would be that uh, inside when I rev this thing up, it there's something that's loose in the um, muffler itself. My guess would be some of the baffles in there, maybe the welds weren't done. I'm gonna get rid of it and order a new exhaust setup. Probably the same one that I had on the Hellcat. 
And then the only other problem that I have so far is these chains are super tight. Yes, they stretch over time, but if you look right here on the back of this uh, swing arm, where this is tightened down, it can't move forward anymore. So when that chain is as tight as it is, if you want to swap out chains, obviously you want to uh, swap everything out anyway if you're going to change sprockets and chains and stuff like that it's better to get all brand new if you do swap out a chain or if you do swap out a sprocket but the problem that i'm having is i wanted to take that out i was going to swap in this smaller 13 front sprocket for now the reason why i'm going down is is because I want it to be torque here off the line. So I'm dropping down from the 16 to a 13T. And the problem that I had was adjusting this thing and trying to get the stock one back on. Mind you, I haven't even swapped it out yet. The stock one and just being the way it is with that tight chain, it's, it was nearly impossible to get on. You have a hair, a sliver of, of a, a micrometer, uh, the smallest amount of space of play to be able to get this thing back together. So it made it a pain in the ass, busting up your knuckles and stuff like that. Uh, it does suck. I do like to have a couple extra chain lengths on my chain so there's some play where I can adjust it. There's no adjusting this thing with the stock sprockets as is and the way it is, it's so tight. So I'm waiting for it to stretch a little bit. But again, I'm going down for now on the front sprocket so that way it's torquier. Again, I'm going with the 13. The pitch is 428 on these chains on this specific bike. I think most of them are. I can't really remember the uh, chain pitch on the Hellcat. But so far, it's a carburetor. Uh, I did swap out the handlebars. I went with the same handlebars on the Hellcat that I had. I'll throw up a picture. Um, I think they're the same. They're similar. This has more of a slant to it. Nice little slant on there. I think the other ones were straight up and down. But it looks the same, it's low profile, it's not tall like that, uh, the stock ones. Almost like a BMX bike feel. I didn't like that. You're sitting really upright with those and I kind of like being able to lean over a tiny bit. I know it's not a real crotch rocket or sport bike, but it gives you that feel when you go with a lower handlebar like this. And it just feels a lot better to me and it looks a lot cooler too. Uh, I'm definitely gonna swap out the levers at some point, probably do another big old different master cylinder. I kind of like the cylinder style or round uh, reservoir, brake fluid reservoirs with the little cap. Might go with red. And then just LED headlights. So yeah, I went and wired up the LED headlights. I did have, um, if you can see them over there, I did have the, I had a set of HIDs that I put in. They were the super blue 8K they're bright, but I didn't like how it looked. I didn't have a problem with them. The only thing that I had was uh, after I installed them, the one thing that I didn't like was the plastics on here. They're the, the clear plastic. It was really, really hot. It wasn't so much a problem riding the bike, but it was a problem if you tend on, intend on sitting for a few minutes or sitting just for those few minutes, it gets so hot. So that's kind of worrisome. So I said, you know what, screw it. Swapped back out. The LED lights that come with these are so dim. I don't know if I, I don't know if I kept them. I might've kept them. Let me see here. Yeah, these are it. These things, they came with, it's H11, I believe. It, it is just stupid dim. It, you, yeah. If you plan on riding your bike, this specific bike at night, uh, good luck. And I only say that because, uh, well, with these stock lights that come with it. Yes, they're LED, pretty cool, but they are not bright at all. So another thing that I did too, uh, excuse me, I removed the rear uh, fender that comes super far out. I removed that and uh, mainly because I like the flush look. When it sets that far out, it's just kind of ugly. That's the first thing I did on, on any of my bikes usually is just get rid of that rear fender. However, I kind of screwed it up because with this stock little muffler here, the turn signals got in the way from shorting, shortening it. So the problem I was running into was this space right here for the, uh, the turn signals. So what I did was this actual rear fender is from the Venom GTO that I have a video or a couple videos on. 
I ended up finding this. I still had this. I kind of chopped it up and shortened it so I've got plenty of clearance here and uh, that way I can mount a license plate on there. I took off the rear LED plate light from the Venom one that comes on this bike and the only reason why I kept this light is because it's actually LED. So it's LED, there's no swapping out bulbs. It's bright white LED and it looks great. But what I had to do was is modify this whole piece so it's set farther back and for the time being, so that way there's clearance for this license plate and the turn signals with this muffler. Um, so I just drilled some holes in the sides. I do have some other turn signals. If you've seen my very first video on the Hellcat, I had the sequential turn signals. At some point I may buy those, but you know what? These are LED from, these are LED anyway. They came with the bike and they look great. They're not ugly. They're not hideous. They're not big. It's LED and I mean, they're bright. It looks good. Nothing spectacular, nothing cool, but I do like how it's recessed back up in there and uh, how I made that fit. So I'll probably end up keeping this and not buying right away a metal uh, fender delete kit. So I did this, looks great to me. Everything's tucked back nice. You can still see the turn signals, you can see everything, but it doesn't look ugly. You know, it doesn't come super far off the back of the bike. Painted the rear metal frame thing, this luggage tie down thing that came with it, painted it red. It does not match the red on the wheels or anything. That's more of like an orangey red. So I may paint these too. But other than that guys, uh, I need to order mirrors and that's about it. Change your oil, change your spark plug. If you plan on riding it, I highly recommend buying a better carburetor. Should be a fun bike to ride. I can't wait to get more videos of riding it and just having a blast on it. Now that I have a better camera too, I think the very first video I, or several videos I made, I had a really shitty uh, GoPro knockoff, but I've got better tools now and better video footage. So I plan on getting out and just friggin' ripping it on this thing. Uh, a lot of videos to come. Let me know what you wanna see. If you have a question, I will answer those questions. I answer every single question. So uh, if you have them, don't be afraid to ask a question. I will answer it almost instantly. Uh, yeah, stick around guys. And if you like what you saw, give me a big old thumbs up. Subscribe if you want to, don't have to, and you guys know what to do. Stay safe, ride safe, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.